Hello, I'm Frank Lovejoy. Tonight I play the role of a man who wages a war of nerves. The play is entitled Safe Journey. It's a story of people on a train. The story of who they are and what they are. And uh, if they are what they say they are. cup of coffee I've had in a long time. Something wrong with yours? No. Come on, Neely, let's go. It's not hurry. We got plenty of time. Why don't we relax and enjoy ourselves? This isn't a pleasure trip. It is for me. This is a real vacation. It's the first time in a long, long time I haven't known exactly what was going to happen when it was going to happen and why it was going to happen. You want me to tell you? You really think you'll know? Will there be anything else? Yes, I'd like some more coffee. Give us a check. Tell me, miss, what about you? You always know exactly what's going to happen? To me? No, except I'm through work at eight. And after that? No boyfriend, no date? Well, no. Not tonight. Will you give us a check? Two coffees, 30 cents. I got it. Keep the change. Well, thanks. Uh, did you just get in town? No, we're just leaving. Oh. Well, the only reason I asked was that I thought if you just got in... You mean no boyfriend, no date? Well... well thank you. That might be fun. But even if my friend and I weren't leaving, I don't think I could break away. Fresh air is no novelty to you, it is to me. Why don't you let me get some? Just want a cigarette. Sorry, boys, gotta move this. Something wrong? No, nothing's wrong. You ready? Sure. Baggage on board, Porter. Yes, sir. In your compartment. There you are, gentlemen. Compartment B.
sorry. Okay. You should have pulled out of here ten minutes ago. I'm in no hurry. When this is over, I go back to prison and you go back to riding in the squad car. Let's make the trip last as long as possible, hmm? You'll feel differently when the district attorney gets you on the witness stand tomorrow. Well, maybe and maybe not. I might tell him everything he wants to know. You're going to cooperate? I'll tell you better in the morning. This is a long train ride. Like I said in the coffee shop, you never can tell what might happen. I may never get to that courtroom. You'll get there, Neely. Never can tell. Haven't you got a book, anything to read? I don't do much reading. Don't you? I do. One thing about prison gives you man plenty of time to read. It's getting the time the hard way, isn't it? Everybody should read, even a cop. Might learn something and help you with your job. Like this book, The Calm Mind. You could use a little of that. What do you mean? Hey, you're tense and you're jumpy. Of course, that's perfectly natural. Here you are escorting Sam Neely across three states. Anybody be nervous in your shoes. Tell you what, there's a chapter here. Could get it, will you? All right, I was just trying to be helpful. I don't like to see you worried. I'm not worried. I haven't got anything to worry about. Yeah, that's true, isn't it? I said, get up. We're going to sit on the other seat. Say, I did. I don't like riding backwards. It's pretty fast. Don't try that again. You are nervous, aren't you? Shut up. Just sit down. Not by the window. I use your head. If we use this seat, I have to sit by the window. Unless you want to take the cuffs off. Okay, wise guy. I don't want you to get sick riding backwards. Never mind. Just sit down. No need to feel embarrassed pulling your gun on me like that. Perfectly natural when you're as tense as you are. I didn't shove you on purpose. Even you know that now. Why should I go pushing you around? I couldn't get away from you even if I tried. How could I? Don't try. I wouldn't dream of it. Like you didn't dream of it three years ago in prison? I'm not taking any chances, Neely. Well, that's smart. No, breaking out of prison is different. You can't do it alone. I didn't do it alone. I had help. I had friends. Well, you don't have any friends on this train. That's what I mean. Now, if I did have, then you'd have something to worry about. Suppose I had a couple of people stationed. Plants. Suppose I'd been able to tip them off as to what train we were getting. But without that, I can't do anything. You can't make a break alone. You've got to have friends. Who is it? Order, sir. What do you want? Anything I can do for you, gentlemen? The diner open? Oh, yes, sir. It's kind of crowded right now, though. We'll wait. I could use a beer. So could you. I don't want one. You sure? Yeah. Just one, then. Pretty big boy. You didn't get that bill serving refreshments. No, sir. I reckon not. Light heavy? Middle. How do you like this job? Man's got to make a buck somehow, sir. A lot of ways to make a buck. Especially for a boy like you. I'm open to suggestions, sir. You figure when you don't have a friend, you can always buy one, is that it? You don't mean that porter, do you? I caught all that double talk, Neely. How dumb do you think I am? I don't think you're dumb at all. In fact, you're bright. You're too bright. You've been catching things when there's nothing to catch. What good can that ex-pug do me? He wouldn't do you any good. Why should he stick his neck out? If he knows you at all, he knows you've been in prison for five years. You haven't got a dime you couldn't pay off. Well, you might be wrong about that. 
I might have some old friends who'd be willing to pay off if I never showed up to testify in that courtroom. Still, even so, what good can that boy do me? You've got a gun, and all that porter has got is his two fists. At least as far as I know. No, friends you buy on the spur of the moment can't do you much good. Of course, they might pitch in if the setup was right. But you've got to have a setup to make a break. Got to have everything arranged in advance. Have your friend planted just right, have everything timed just right. Otherwise, you can't be sure. What do you want? Well, are you gentlemen waiting to see me? Uh, is, is that a gun? What does it look like? Why don't you take it easy, fellow? Apparently, the gentleman I'll made do the it. talking. But, but, who are you? Police. Let's keep the record straight. I'm a... Uh... Shut up. No, no, no. Just a minute. This isn't anything but a little mistake. Just an innocent, honest mistake. Uh, Gunther's the name, officer. Charlie Gunther. I have some identification right here. Get your hands out of your pocket. Uh, Gunther, that's the name. Salesman. Okay, all right. Get out. I'd like to explain, officer. Thought that this was my compartment. What's your compartment? Uh, a. Compartment A. Well, this is B. Now, get out. A, uh, as in, say, uh, after dinner? What? Oh. Oh, yes. <laughs> A very good friend. <laughs> A is an after dinner. Very good. Oh, it's my eyes, officer. Reason for the mistake, my eyes. Very bad, nearsighted. Can't see a thing without my glasses. But I broke them this afternoon, making a call on the Phillips Company, and... I told you to get out. You'll have to excuse my friend, mister. He's a little jittery. Even with these cuffs and his gun and the train going 70 miles an hour, he thinks I'm going to walk out on it. Don't you think that's impossible? Ridiculous. Ridiculous. You haven't a thing to worry about, officer. He couldn't possibly get away. Unless... Well, uh, unless the train stops. That's right. You've got the idea. Unless the train stops. Well, heads up, sir. Oh, uh, excuse me, Porter. Uh, made a little mistake walking to the wrong compartment. You're in the next one, sir. Hey. Yes, yes. Well, uh, just a minute, sir. Here's the newspaper you asked me to get you. Oh, oh, yes, yes. Uh, uh, thank you, sir. Uh, thank you. It's funny. What's that, sir? Why should a man who says he can't see a thing because he broke his glasses ask you to get him a newspaper? I don't know, sir. Well, maybe he's getting it for his wife. Well, that gentleman ain't with nobody. He's traveling alone. Well, if he's putting on an act... Why would he be putting on an act? Beats me. A uh, porter, sir? Yes, I like it set up. You get that? A setup. Yeah, I get it. Too bad it wasn't a beautiful woman that blundered in here. Don't suppose there are any around, are there? Well, there's a nice blind lady on the other side. Compartment C. Oh. Uh, she was asking about two gentlemen a few minutes ago. Asking about us? Yes, sir. She wanted to know if this here gentleman was Mr. Sam Neely. I said I thought he was. That's all for you. Thank you, sir. Told you there are a lot of ways to make a buck. If you find out any others, sir, you just let me know. I'll do that. Well, here's to the blonde in compartment C. And a safe journey. table, fellas. We'll find an empty one. Why? Everything else seems to be filled out. We don't want to be rude to the lady. I figured you two would have to eat sometime. I've run up quite a bill waiting for you. Yeah? Why? 
My name is Estelle Vaughn. I'm a newspaper reporter. That is, I was until a few weeks ago when I got the axe. I've been looking for a job ever since. I still am. So what has that got to do with us? You can give me a break, chum. Let me talk to Sam Neely here. Maybe he'll tell me what he's going to say when he gets on the stand tomorrow, whether he's going to talk or not. You want an exclusive, Miss Vaughn? Yeah. There's something like this to sell. I could buy a job on any newspaper in town ten minutes after we get in. What do you say? Forget it. Look, fella. Shut up, Neely. It's out. You're not giving any interview. Very nervous temperament, my friend. Probably feel better after he has something to eat. You must be the girl in compartment C. Yeah. I thought I recognized you when you got on. I checked with the porter. Yes, he told us. Very nice fellow, that porter. He's real friendly. Used to be a prize fighter. Be a nice handy man to have around in a pinch. You know what I mean. How about the lowdown, Sam? Are you going to talk? Well, I no. said forget it, didn't I? Look, miss, if you're through with your dinner, you'd better leave. What's eating you? Well, he doesn't think you are a reporter. He thinks you're a plant. Me, a plant? He thinks you're going to help me make a break. <laughs> well, don't feel too flattered. He thinks that about everybody on the train. Do you? Not only everybody on the train, he thinks the whole world is ganging up on him, don't you? Oh, that really kills me. Do you really think we're getting ready to spring him? Well, well, here's our other neighbor, Mr. Gunther. Mr. Gunther, sit here. Join the party. Well, uh, thank you, friend. Glad there's no hard feelings about the mistake I made when I walked Oh, in. think nothing of it. Just relax. We're all friends here, aren't we, Miss Vaughn? That's right. Everybody here are friends. Well, that's fine. That's what I like to see on trips like this. Everybody friends. You and me both, Mr. Gunther. I was talking about that just a little while ago, wasn't I? A man has to have friends. Mr. Man, I'm not hungry? No. You shouldn't have blown your top at them like that. Especially just before dinner. Bad for your digestion. I didn't want him around. Why not? Gunther's just a salesman and the girl's a hard-working newspaper woman. At least that's what she says she is. Even if you didn't want her to oh, interview... Shut up, Neely, will you? Let's go. What about some dessert? Pie, maybe? Coffee? Coffee'd be good for you. It'll set your nerves. Matter. I think we're stopping. Yeah. Yeah, we are. Must be coming into a town. I don't see a town. You don't? I don't see a house. Not a light any place. Stopped in the middle of nowhere. That's funny. Why would a train stop in the middle of nowhere? I don't know. Do you, Neely? Well, if I did what I say. Well, let's go. What about dessert? I said let's go. Okay, where are we going? We're going back to the compartment. And that's where we're standing until this train starts moving again. Are those friends of mine on each side of us? Okay, if you think it's safe, you're the boss. Where do we stop, Conductor? Well, all this happens once in a while in the mountains. What happens? The slide. The tracks up ahead are all covered with rocks. The road gang's working on it, though. It won't take long. What would cause that? The landslide, I mean. Oh, most anything. Wind, rain, a few stones start rolling and dislodge a lot more. Just an act of God, huh? You can call it that. Let's do call it just that, shall we? An act of God. Keep moving, Neely. You gentlemen want your berths made up yet? Not yet. Joe, why not? I'm sleepy. Let's hit the hay early. I said not yet. What are you going to do with a kid like that? Won't let an old man get some sleep. <laughs> I'll be calling you real soon now. I'll just ring the bell, sir. Anytime you need me. Well, 
Well, it's about time you boys stop feeding your faces. What do you want? I've been thinking it over. There's nothing in the book that says a cop can keep a reporter from getting an interview if the guy wants to talk. How about it, Sam? Get out of here. Oh, relax, sonny boy. Get out! Look, why be a heel? This is bread and butter to me. If I don't land a job in the next town, I don't eat. I said get out of here. And if I don't? If I stay and talk to Neely here, what are you going to do, sweetheart? Plug me? You haven't had much experience handling women, either. You need help. I'll ring for the porter. No. He said all we had to do was ring. You touch that button, Neely, so help me, I'll shoot. But you trust the porter, either, a nice man like him? You don't trust anybody, do you? No, you don't. Now, Buster, try to keep a poor, hard-working girl from making an honest dollar. You give me that gun. Give it to me. Apparently, she's not going to. I should have told you I was left-handed. Sir. Feeling better now, sir? What's the idea of that? This here? This is yours. You better take it now. I don't get it. Where's Neely? Oh, in here, sir. With the lady. That's why after that, the outfit split up and that... Wow. Feeling better? He's telling her all what he's going to say at the trial tomorrow. Uh, you take over now, sir. I'm not used to standing guard over convicts. Standing guard? Yes, sir. We've been keeping an eye on him until you come, too. The lady called me right after he slugged you. We figured you ought to stretch out. The only way to do that was to take those cuffs off of him and bring him in here. Then, then you weren't... Th that Vaughn woman, What's she that, sir? Uh, nothing, nothing. Okay, thanks, Porter. You, uh, you can make up our berths now. Oh, yes, sir. And here's the keys to the handcuffs. Thank you. The guy's name was Kelly. Okay, Neely. The gab fest is over. Let's get back where we belong. Ah, oh, come on. I've only got half a story. Why don't you be a good guy? Yeah. Now, don't you really think you owe this girl a break? Don't you? Do you mind if I listen? Now, where were we? Hope that sore jaw doesn't keep you up all night. I wasn't planning on sleeping, thanks. Why not? You're safe now. Think of all the new friends you made. Yeah. You know, I'm sorry about slugging you. I hadn't planned it that way, but when the girl picked up the gun, I thought it was worth a try. You thought she was a plant yourself. You thought that maybe some of your old friends put her on board the train? Not for a minute. Oh, maybe I hoped she was. It wasn't even that. I just wished. I know she was what she said she was. Just the way I know Gunther was a salesman, the porter couldn't be bought. The landslide really was an act of God. So what was the idea? Oh, long train rides bore me. Tell you the truth, I get bored reading sometimes. Thought I had a little fun. Did you have any? As a matter of fact, I did. <laughs> 